In this thrilling conclusion to our video on training big models in the cloud, I'll help you scale your compute power for machine learning. Will our training have enough resources? Stay tuned to find out. In our previous episode, we talked about the problems that are encountered when your data is too big to fit on your local machine. And we discussed how we can move that data off onto the cloud to have scalable storage. Today, we move on to the second half of that problem, getting those compute resources wrangled together. When training larger models, the current approach involves doing training in parallel. What this means is that our data gets split up and sent to many worker machines. And then the model must put the information and signals it's getting back together to create the fully trained model. Now, you could spin up some virtual machines and install the network libraries, network them together, configure them to run distributed machine learning, and then when you finish, you'd want to take down those machines. While this may seem easy to some, it can be a challenge if you're not familiar with things like installing GPU drivers and debugging compatibility problems between different versions of the underlying libraries. So today, we'll use cloud machine learning engines training functionality to go from Python code to train model with no infrastructure work needed. The service automatically acquires and configures resources as needed and shuts them down when it's done training. There are three main steps to using Cloud Machine Learning Engine. Packaging your Python code, creating a configuration file that describes the kind of machines you want, and submitting your training job to the cloud. Let's see how to set up our training to take advantage of this service. We've moved our Python code from our Jupyter Notebook out into a separate script on its own. Let's call that file task.py. This is going to act as our Python module, which will be called from other files. Now we want to wrap task.py inside a Python package. Python packages are made by placing the module inside another folder. Let's call it trainer. And placing an empty file, underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore, dot pi alongside task.py. So our final file structure is made up of a folder called trainer containing two files, the init.py and the task.py files. While our package is called trainer, uh, our module path is trainer.task. If you wanted to break out the code into more components, you would include those in this folder as well. For example, you might have, say, a util.py in the trainer folder. Once our code is packaged up, it's time to create a configuration file to specify what machines you want running your training. You can choose to run your training with just a small number of machines, as few as one, or many machines with GPUs attached to them. There are a few predefined specifications, which make it easy to get started. And once you grow out of those, you can configure a custom architecture to your heart's content. We've got our Python code packaged up, and we have our configuration file written out. So let's move on to the step you've all been waiting for, the training. To submit a training job, we'll use the gcloud command line tool and run gcloud ml engine jobs submit training. There's also an equivalent REST API call. We specify a unique job name, the package path and module name, the region for your job to run in, and a cloud storage directory to place the outputs of your training. Be sure to use the same region as where your data is stored to get optimal performance. Once you run this command, your Python package is going to get zipped up and uploaded to the directory we just specified. From there, the package will be run in the cloud on the machines that we specified in the configuration. You can monitor your training job in the cloud console by going to ML Engine and selecting Jobs. There, we will see a list of all the jobs we've ever run, including the current job. You can also see a timer on how much time the job has taken so far and a link to the logs that are coming out of the model. Our code exports the trained model to our cloud storage path that we have provided in the job directory. So from here, we can easily point the prediction service directly at the outputs and create a prediction service, as we learned about in episode four, serverless predictions at scale. Using Cloud Machine Learning Engine, we can achieve distributed training without dealing with infrastructure ourselves. As a result, we can spend more time with our data. Simply package up the code, add that configuration file, and submit the training job. If you want the nitty gritty details on TensorFlow's distributed training model, check out this in-depth talk from the TensorFlow Dev Summit. But for now, remember, spend less time building distributed systems and more time with your data by training your model using Cloud Machine Learning Engine. I'm Yu Feng Guo, and thanks for watching this episode of Cloud AI Adventures. If you enjoyed it, please go ahead and hit that like button. And for more machine learning action, be sure to subscribe to the channel to catch future episodes right when they come out.